Hey there YouTube, I'm Joe. You're watching Ink and Iron, and I'm back today with another knife review of the Craig Brown Knives Exponent. And uh, just to head it off at the pass, the MSRP on this guy is $1,250. Full disclosure, I did not buy this knife. It was provided to me by my friend Sid. Thank you very much, Sid. And uh, Sid is actually looking to sell it, so you can consider me a broker in that sense. Um, just wanted to get that out there in case you're going to be flabbergasted later on and leave me a negative comment. You might as well just do it now. And uh, my cat has hopped up onto my desk, so it's time to go to the tabletop and do the full review of this knife. Seb. <laughs> Seb. Hey. Hey. I need you to get down. <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> Technical difficulties. All right, and we're here at the tabletop review of the Brown Knives Exponent. Welcome, everyone. And uh, I know I just said the MSRP on this was 1250 bucks. I will actually be adding a little bit to that um, for reasons I will get into in just a second. As you can see, the knife comes from Brown Knives in this Pelican case, or uh, it's kind of like a Pelican case. I don't know if it's Pelican brand, doesn't appear to be, but there's a full piano hinge two uh, latch closures, as well as a little area to uh, lock it up, security closure. There's a lanyard. And then on the inside, we have a rubber gasket that goes around and keeps this uh, watertight, I believe. I don't know if it's totally airtight, but uh, certainly a good seal. Has some pretty nice foam in here. And then before we get into the knife, just wanna go over a few things. So comes with, a sticker, right? Brown knives, just like you saw on the front. And then a certificate of authenticity, just to show you that this thing is in fact real. This is the exponent model in Dama Steel. Um, the handle materials are uh, 6A14V, I believe that is a titanium grading right there. And then uh, zirconium is actually what this show scale is made out of. This is number 79. Let me see if I can show you the uh, inside here. I don't know if you can totally make it out, but right in here it says number 79. And uh, yeah, made by Craig Brown. I guess that's his signature. Fairly uh, simple signature there. And uh, yeah, free sharpening for life. So it does come with some perks as well. Remember how I said the MSRP that I gave you was a little off? Well, that would be due to the backspacer and clip. So let me explain here. The original ones that come with it and that you can see on the website call these orange peel clip and backspacer and you can see the texturing on here. If I get close enough, see the, the rough texturing on there? It looks a lot like an orange peel made out of titanium. So this is the original clip and uh, the original backspacers here as well. All right, just wanted to get that out of the way. It is real, it does come with some cool stuff. But uh, yeah, let's get into the knife review here. Let's just take a look at this real quick, drink it in, maybe get myself a thumbnail while I'm at it. It's a very elegant blade. Yeah, I think that's the thumbnail right there. So philosophy of use is gonna be our first discussion. Now, obviously a uh, knife in this price category starts to become a little bit more than an everyday carry or around the house carry, like this one certainly could be. Um, I see this as more of an investment piece at this price point. And uh, the more I get into the knife hobby, the more I understand knives like this. If you'd asked me 10 years ago if I would even consider, you know, taking a look at a knife that was worth more than a, a thousand bucks, I probably would have laughed it off. Um, you know, I'm used to taking stuff like this and, you know, pounding it through wood and shoving it into plastic and aluminum and all kinds of horrible things. So something like this wouldn't have really um, wet my whistle, so to speak, until just recently. As I said earlier, talk about the steel. It is Dama steel, and this is a layered type steel where they fold it over itself and create this very cool psychedelic pattern. Let's try and get as close as possible and get as much detail as you can handle. The uh, deployment is actually a front flipper 
as you saw me actuating here. So basically, if you're right-handed, I like to put my fingers on the clip and then flick it out like that. And the reason I do that is because uh, there's a tendency to press onto the lock bar with a knife this thin. So yeah, you wanna try and ride that clip and, uh, oh my God, flick it out. Apparently I should have practiced more before this video. The uh, grind is a full flat grind, but we do have this sort of sweeping curve right here, which not quite a sharpening choil. I don't know what you would call that, but uh, it is aesthetically very pleasing. I really like the shape of this blade. And the grind also has a distal taper here at the tip. So really this from like this little portion right here does the most work of this blade in terms of cutting, um, which I will show you in just a second. The uh, length of the blade is 89.4 millimeters, uh, which is 3.52 inches. Um, so it is legal to carry in a whole lot of states in the US, not all of them obviously but uh, three and a half inches is a pretty good EDC size, if you're asking me. The uh, behind the edge thickness is 0 0.45 millimeters or 0 0.018 inches. That's 18 thousandths of an inch behind the edge. So uh, I'm talking of course about this measurement right here, right behind that edge bevel. So yeah, that's actually thinner than a paramilitary two from Spyderco uh, if we are gauging it you know, against its uh, brethren. Not exactly competition at this price. The lockup is very solid. And uh, I should mention that this is on bearings. The pivot has bearings in it. So when you go to deploy this knife, it really doesn't matter how much gusto you put into it. It will carry itself into a fully locked out position. And by fully locked out, I mean, this feels as solid as any uh, cold steel triad lock that I've gotten my hands on. And uh, that's very impressive. I will put that down to the machining that uh, Craig Brown has put into this. He is um, by trade a um, aerospace engineer. Sorry, almost forgot. He's an aerospace engineer. So he's used to working with, you know, sub millimeter tolerances and, you know, very fine machining. And I think it shows in this piece quite a bit. The uh, performance, let me flick this out, grab a piece of paper. Here's a little paper I've been typing on. I'm working on my typing skills. So, yeah, look at that. <laughs> it is very thin behind the edge. It does have a pretty good edge from the factory. I will say it doesn't seem like it's been stropped in my experience because it does feather a little bit there, but um, if you are, you know, putting down 1400 bucks for yeah, a knife like this, you're probably not too concerned with having ultimate cutting performance, right? We're not paying for um, something to cut all day, every day, cardboard and rope and horrible things. This is a showpiece. This is something to brag about, and this is something to collect because, uh, you know, has pretty good resale value. All right, anyway, uh, that brings us to uh, where I would normally talk about sharpening, but uh, yeah, since I'm selling this knife and uh, it is best preserved in its original state, I am not going to sharpen this thing. It is fairly sharp right now, so I'm not too worried about it, and I'm certainly not gonna use it on anything more than paper for the sake of this video. Okay, and I forgot to give you the overall specs, so let me do that today and I'm not gonna voice it over, I'm gonna do it live for once. So as I said, blade length here is 89.4 millimeters or 3.52 inches. The width of the blade, so right here, 23.8 millimeters or 0 0.935 inches. The stock thickness, so measuring this portion right here before it tapers off is 3.93 millimeters or 0 0.155 inches. Behind the edge thickness, as I said earlier, 0 0.45 millimeters or 18 thousandths of an inch. The handle length, let me give this a close. Handle length, so right here, 105.8 millimeters or 4.17 inches. Handle thickness, so this guy right here, 12.2 millimeters or 0 0.48 inches, almost a half inch. The steel, as I said twice now, <laughs> is Dama steel. And uh, the total weight here is 96.6 grams or 3.41 ounces, which is 
pretty reasonable given that it is a three and a half inch blade. Okay, now moving into the handles, since we have talked plenty about the blade, actually one more, two more things. The jimping up here is very light. It is not Spyderco jimping. It's not anybody else's jimping. It just is a little nice touch for a little bit of added traction. And um, I wanted to point out right here, the edge doesn't begin until right about here. So all this portion is unsharpened. And what that allows for is a little bit of a choked up grip if you need it. I wouldn't go too far because you'll wind up on the blade without realizing it. But also when this is closed, as you can see, it almost sticks out the backside, but luckily this portion is unsharpened, so it's not going to cut you. And when you go to close the blade, right, so we move the lock bar out of the way, when the blade comes down, that's not a sharpened portion that's near my finger. And if you were to move to that sharpened portion, you are basically out of range of disengaging this lock bar. So I think it's very well considered um, having this unsharpened portion here. I think it adds a lot of functionality and safety to the design. Okay, now, finally, handle materials. As I said, this front show side scale is made of zirconium. Um, it's very hard to work with material. Apparently it's quite dangerous to work with, um, but it does take a nice oxide finish when you're all done, giving it this nice like gunmetal color. And then this appears to be bead blasted, which explains the matte finishing. Uh, this inlay here is actually secured with hardware, as you can see right here right there. So those are indeed screws holding this in place. This is black Timascus and uh, I'm not sure how many layers of titanium are in there but uh, oh man that is gorgeous. Look at that. It's fairly smooth but there is a slight height difference between the layers that you can feel with your fingers. But uh, yeah the look is just stunning there and I'm glad to see that this isn't just epoxied in um, like you would find on some cheaper knives. This is actually physically secured to the piece, which is um, reassuring. <laughs> uh, anyway, this backside scale is titanium in another uh, similar matte finish here, I believe also bead blasted. Don't quote me on that, I didn't create the knife. Uh, the clip here is an aftermarket clip, but also from Craig Brown, as you can see by the logo. This appears to be Timascus as well, and uh, has some very nice texturing on here, which I'll touch on in a minute. Same texturing on the backspacer and very similar material as well. So overall just very nice machining. We are sitting dead center and uh, you can see a very <clears throat> very symmetrical design here for the um, lock bar cutout as well as the cutout at the end of the lock bar to give it flexibility to travel under the blade. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Boom, there you go. Flexes right here gets in up under that blade. And uh, yeah, there is no lock stick on here. It is a very nice blade dis disengagement, rather. And uh, man, I don't know if you can tell how smooth this is on camera. Hopefully you can. <laughs> Those bearings are just absolute buttery smooth. Really great action. Um, we do have a single-sided pivot. However, you can see the stainless steel on this side has two flats, which would keep it in place if you ever had to adjust the pivot. Um, I'm not going to do it, and I probably wouldn't suggest you do it yourself either. Maybe send it back to uh, Craig Brown if you need that kind of thing. Um, I checked the sizing on this hardware just loosely, and uh, it does appear to be uh, either T8. It, it might be a little bit bigger at like a T9. So there is some durability here in the hardware, which is nice to see. Even, uh, you know, manufacturers, popular ones like Spyderco, use a T6, so it's good to see some uh, long-lasting and trustworthy hardware on here. The uh, traction plan is pretty light. Like I said, this is a very light-duty knife, everyday carry around the house kind of thing, dedicated letter opener. Um, the jimping adds a little bit, and it is nice that you can kind of slip up a little onto the blade without getting cut, and um, honestly the clip adds a little bit of traction as well. I think it's more than enough for um, everyday tasks, especially the ones that uh, a blade of this caliber is going to be doing. And to speak a little bit more about how this is in the hand, as we can see here, and I'm going to bring in a, uh, here's a pair of three for comparison. 
Do you see how much more square the uh, exponent is than the para three? The para three in the hand feels a little bit like you're gripping um, like a ruler, <laughs> like a yardstick, you know, a meter stick, something like that. This is a little bit more um, square, a little bit more even in terms of the ratio between thickness and width. And uh, I think that's appropriate. It gives it more of the um, open L, sort of a rounded feeling in the hand. It fills the hand a little bit better, which I think is good considering how narrow the uh, handle design is to begin with. I think that was a, an appropriate choice to make it rather sort of thick in this dimension. It makes it a lot more comfortable. The uh, blade to handle ratio is actually pretty good. We are almost one to one. Um, I always prefer a design that makes the most of the blade length without giving you a whole bunch of handle to deal with later on. Okay, now finally, let's talk about this clip a little bit. It does have some flex in it, and it is machined in multiple dimensions, if I can show you that. I don't know if you can see that little sort of rounded cutout right at the tip here. Oh, there you go, a little bit more visible. So there's quite a considerable amount of machining that goes into this, and uh, the jimping is actually very functional. I will show a quick clip of this in my pocket. Um, just note, I don't carry this around in my pocket all the time. Um, again, not my knife, and if it was, I certainly wouldn't be carrying it in my pocket because it came with a pelican case. Yeah, it's pretty easy to go in and out of the pocket. That smooth titanium makes it rather simple to hook over the pants. And then uh, this texturing on this clip really helps to draw it out very securely. Yeah, I've got no worries about that coming in or falling out of my pocket. Okay, now that you've seen it in my pocket, let's go over uh, how ambidextrous this knife is. Um, it is just as easy, if not easier, to engage this knife with the left hand. And um, I will explain why, uh, because we talked about the lock bar earlier and how as a right-hander, you will probably wrap around and press onto the lock bar when you're first trying to get the blade open and that's not the way to do it. That would be why I rest on the clip back here and flick it out that way. However, if you are left-handed, you don't have to worry about that. Your fingers wrap around to that black Timascus inlay and the palm of your hand rests against the clip. So uh, yeah, it's honestly a piece of cake. Now, unfortunately, you can't switch the clip, but uh, I will forgive that on a knife like this because if we were to add, you know, the ability to swap the clip, you'd have some ugly little cutout right here that you'd have to look at right next to your beautiful uh, Timascus inlay. So I can totally understand why that's not a thing. Now we come to our price point discussion and I will roll in some size comparisons so you can gauge how big this knife is from stuff in your own collection. Okay, we have a Paramilitary 2 and this is a Benchmade 940 in full titanium review upcoming. So, like I said, the normal MSRP on this blade was 1250 bucks, but with the additional clip and backspacer coming customized with Timascus themselves, the total price was somewhere a little over 1400 bucks. Um, that is not what I'm going to be asking for this price, if you're curious about that. Here's my email address somewhere in here. Feel free to email me and discuss the price of this knife if you would like to know more. Um, yeah, so what I like to do with the price point discussion is talk about whether or not I think the knife is worth it. And as I said earlier, I am beginning to see knives more as investments rather than simply just tools. And I think it's because I'm learning more and more about the industry and what goes into the manufacturing of these materials that it starts to make more and more sense why these things hold value over time, right? You can't just have a Damascus blade and uh, let me show you an example of a very cheap Damascus blade to illustrate my point. Here we have a very rugged Damascus blade from uh, Old Forge. This is their Barlow knife. And uh, you can see it is Damascus. It is a lower layer count Damascus. So we get some more exaggerated lines, but do you see this right here? This is a almost cold shut between two layers of steel. So you run the risk when you're folding steel of you know, having a gap, having the two steels not weld together properly in the forge. And uh, so you end up with something like this, which can compromise the integrity of the blade. Could be a safety issue, or it could just be an aesthetic flaw. But uh, as you can tell, 
with the Craig Brown exponent. There is nothing like that going on here. This is using Damas Steel, and uh, that is a brand name, and they do it right, as you can tell. There is absolutely no way to tell the multiple layers of steel apart on this guy. It is perfectly done, and there's a cost associated with a material like that. And likewise, there's a cost associated with getting multiple layers of titanium to weld together properly, and then to, you know, color it however they did it. I'm not sure if they used um, electricity, you know, an anodization like that, or if they hit it with flames. I have no clue, but my god, it's gorgeous. And then to have this precision machining go on top of it, there is quite a bit of workmanship that goes into a piece like this, and I'm appreciating that more and more um, with every day that I'm in the knife hobby. And uh, yeah, again, thanks to Sid for sending this to me to uh, give me a look at it. Here's an open L number eight and a pair of three. Okay, so is it worth it? Well, kind of depends on who you are. If you're like me multiple years ago, you know, taking your uh, reasonably priced knife and, you know, slam a jam on it into stuff and cutting with it every day and, you know, you need something in the warehouse to cut tie down straps, probably don't buy this. But if you were looking for uh, a basically heirloom quality piece that could be handed down or, you know, you need it in the future to bail yourself out of a financial situation, this is honestly a pretty good investment. Um, that being said, and since I'm selling it, I do have a confession to make, so let me clear some stuff out of the way. Okay, I know it's kind of hard to make out here, but you can see that little two-part kind of scratch or dent and that zirconium right there. I believe that was my fault. That is the only blemish on this blade. I have checked over it obsessively, but uh, I'm pretty sure it was my fault because the first thing I did with this was drop it onto my laptop. And I have since learned about zirconium that it's quite soft. It's nowhere near the hard hardness of something like titanium or steel. So uh, yeah, that, that was likely my doing. So I just want to apologize to uh, Sid because he sent me this to uh, sell for him. And then apologies to potential buyers because, uh, yeah, I really uh, I messed up on the most expensive knife I've ever handled. Thanks for uh, joining me there on my apology tour. So, yeah, would I uh, buy a knife like this? Not yet. I don't think I'm in uh, the financial standing to do that kind of thing yet, but uh, I do get it now. Now that I've handled this thing and uh, seen the sort of workmanship that it comes with and the kind of people who are producing this level of... Uh, pocket knife, it really does impress me, and it really does start to uh, coalesce a lot of things that I know about knife manufacturing, and yeah, they uh, just suddenly make more sense as investment pieces, so thank you, Sid, for uh, sending this my way. Hope to get it sold for you soon. Again, I'll put my contact information below if you're interested in purchasing this knife, and uh, yeah, thank you for joining me for the review. As always, I've been Joe, and you've been watching Ink and Iron for more content related to knives and fountain pens and multi-tools and uh, all that kind of thing feel free to uh, like this video and subscribe to the channel hit the bell to get my notifications for when i upload new stuff anyway i've been joe and you've been watching and iron thanks again for joining me i'll catch you on my next video bye